Last week, you saw us kick off our Bay to Bay journey. Starting from Nowra, we took in the glorious views of Kangaroo Valley. Cliffs, canyons and waterfalls were the order of the day. We found our first real fall driving challenge on Gunrock Falls Fire Trail. More of a warm-up than anything else. We had fun sliding down some rock steps before wading through a beautiful creek crossing above Gunrock Falls. After that, it was dust, mud and a setting sun as we made our camp at Sandy Creek. Some serious bog holes were to come the next day along with our first mechanical challenge. Easily fixed with some bush mechanics, we continued on. A more serious breakage would strike not long after with Rob from ARB stuck fast in a treacherous mud hole. A swift recovery saw us back on the tracks but the mud had taken its toll and the car's alternator had given up the ghost. Danny told the convoy what we had in store and Alfred Piranha elected to escort Rob into town. Continue down the track, uh, gets pretty narrow. More ruts, more bog holes, plenty of trees to avoid, down to a, a nice lookout. So you can see it all on TV. Yeah, I'll see it on TV. <laughs> Perfect. All right, all good. So all right, thanks, guys. Rob. All right, done. Your 4x4 is brought to you by Iveco, Trek Hardware, ARB, Cooper, Piranha and Narva. Absolutely sensational day today. Super is the only way to describe it. We've broken a car. We sent another car away with a broken car. And we found another car that was broken. And we've still got a few cars left to make the show. There's an absolute array of tracks around here and if you do happen to take the wrong one, you can end up in an area where you're not really sure where you are. If you're travelling with other people, try and keep close together so you know where the other person is. We started finding much more tighter through the tree sort of tracks. You could see lots of markings on the tree where they've come in and ring barked everything, but everyone managed to get through unscathed today. For some of the larger vehicles or longer vehicles, it was quite testing to get them through. I don't know how the Iveco made it through some of it. Having radios is the best thing of a lot. Make sure you've got a good 5 watt radio that will carry the distance and keep in constant contact with each other. Best way, otherwise you can get yourself in a lot of trouble. Just front and rear, perfect wheelbase for Simon to get stuck in. Front rear lockers on, you might back up a bit and pump out of it. Yeah. Well, it's been a fun drive. We've hit the end of the track. The last couple of k's turned into a walking track, and looking at the time, we don't have the time to walk out there, out to the lookout, back to here. Uh, so we'll turn the vehicles around, get going, and continue on with the trip. Right, 
If we couldn't walk the track, we'd make do with the next best thing. Simply drive to its endpoint, the aptly named Renown Lookout. New South Wales has an absolute epic set of canyons. It's, it reminds you of the Northern Territory. About 22 degrees, couldn't ask for a better spot. Very, very little water, but we're hoping that the drought will break soon and this place will be flooded. With leg day done, we aired up and headed off towards our next destination. With the day growing shorter and part of our convoy still missing in action, it felt a little unfair to put any more tracks under our belt. Just a stone's throw from the renowned lookout is the equally impressive Twin Falls lookout. With easy access compared to our last trip, it gave us a great sneak peek of what the Kangaroo Valley would serve up for the next few days. Here we are, Twin Falls. Sun is absolutely hammering down on top of us. Couldn't ask for better weather. Well, the view is awesome. The actual falls aren't falling, but it is a sensational spot. Very cool. As we left the waterless waterfalls, we noticed thick clouds of smoke starting to creep through the valley. This would become a familiar sight as the days went on. The road to our campground was going to be an easy trek, so I took the opportunity to deviate onto a side track with the daily 4x4. The mud hadn't agreed with it, and taking it for a play would help me iron out some of the kinks. With all the basics working well, it was time to head for camp. Anything else could be sorted back there. Just rolled into Coolandell. It's been a bit of a long day in dusty conditions. An awesome day. Awesome day. So we'll find ourselves a spot and get into it. We're spending the night at Coolandell on the Shoalhaven River. Hopefully the locals will quiet down after dark because it's been a long day of wear and tear. The road in is really, really good. So if you're in a Commodore or a Falcon or something, you can actually get in here, which is quite remarkable. It's a long way off the road, but it's a really, really good road. Once you come in here, the first thing that you're struck by is the peacocks. They're everywhere. They're on top of the roofs of the sheds. They're wandering around. The feather's out looking for someone to show. Hey, look at me, look at me. Hey, look at me, Kimmy, look at me. No Wi-Fi, thank goodness. After saying good day to our hosts and staking claim to our preferred campsites, it was time to stretch the legs and make ourselves at home. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant spot for native wildlife. You've got all the little wallabies getting around, you've got all the bird life, all the guanas. If you really want to get in and see some wombats up close, these things are crawling right up to you and having a look. Alan from Piranha, he loves wombats. He showed me where all the wombat holes were and then all of a sudden we looked, there's one there, there's one there, there's one there. It's a really super spot. A little about this campground, it is sensational. Set on 52 hectares of bushland, it's right on the river. There's tent sites, it's big enough to bring your camper down. There's cabins, bush glamping sites as well. at the river, we just walked down, it's about 100 metres from where we camped and it is absolutely beautiful as you can see. There is a magnificent vista of the rocks across there and there's an echo, you ready? Cool. 
pretty cool echo, eh? Beautiful scenery, lovely spot to be, nice and tranquil. Come and see it. How'd you go? Did you catch any fish? No luck, no luck. Water level's too low, otherwise I'd catch fish. It's sort of like a, a gift. Beautiful spot, surrounded by hills and trees, and you got this oasis, just amazing. G'day guys, you've joined us on a magnificent day here at Coolandel Campground. We camped here last night, we've got up, had a bit of a swim, been for a kayak, had a bit of a fish. It's great for us, but it's also fantastic for things like school groups or people just getting away as a family. Strong current, submerged obstacles, steep drop off. Ready to push off. Hi Captain. Over the top. I'm sitting in this much water on top of the kayak. <laughs> it's like... So here we are in Coolandale, a little swimming hole that they've got. It's not little, it's quite, it's quite big actually. And the uh, camp facilities supply you with these uh, canoes, which is awesome. Oh, Thought I'd take a romantic paddle with the cameraman. So we've had a nice relaxing start to the day, nice and easy, I've loved it. But I know of a few local tracks not far from here, one leads to a spectacular lookout. Whenever Danny promises us a spectacular lookout, he always delivers with something that looks amazing. At the moment though, the only thing we can see is a cloud of dust from the car in front of us. But who could complain about a bit of dust when you're in search of adventure and there's plenty still to come? I was very surprised when we were going through the maps morning with Bob and she found a place they hadn't actually been to and I said, you've been doing this for so many years and you haven't been there yet? It just shows you how vast the country is and I've only just begun that journey. The lookout was spectacular, down into the valley and the escarpments over the other side. It, it was very, very pretty. Unfenced, which is very strange for lookouts in Australia. I felt very unsafe going towards the edge. I stayed about a metre back. I'm not good with heights. Only 15 minutes away from where we're camped, you've got all of this. I can remember this one because this is Mackenzie Lookout, because that's my daughter. Hi, Kenny. You could see there some hoons have been up there and obviously been doing burnouts on the rock ledge and launched a car off the top. That does destroy our environment and that's the last thing we want to see. The authorities have been there after that's happened and laid some rocks and logs along the entry so people can't get vehicles in there anymore, which is the smartest thing to do. It protects our environment so our kids can see it. Although we're in the middle of nowhere, it's, you pop up here, a little bit of elevation, and all your phones start dinging away, and it actually gave me an opportunity to call home and just check in and see how everyone was doing. Just magnificent. And with the smoke haze that's pushing through there, it just adds layers to the backdrop. Absolutely sensational.
we jumped back in the cars, rejoining our route along a beautifully scenic fire trail, lined with some incredible rock features. But that wasn't all. As we rounded a bend, we saw something we couldn't have predicted. We actually came across a bee farm through there, which had plenty of beehives. Not 100% sure how that works, but there were certainly a lot of bees buzzing around there. Must have been 100 beehives. And I've always wondered when you go to the supermarket, where does yellow box honey come from? And it's places like this where they actually collect the nectar from this specific variety of indigenous tree. After taking in the spectacular views at Mackenzie's Lookout and a leisurely tour back down to the crossroads, Simon and I left to have some mechanical issues looked at in town while the others headed back to camp. The dust was absolutely horrendous. You had to drop back probably you know, five minutes behind the car in front so you didn't go off the edge. It was very dry out there. All the headlights were on and all the vehicles just held back to get out of the dust and everyone got through just fine. So we're back down for our last night. So we've come down to the river to relax and chill and a bit of a swim. And what else can you do for the afternoon? It's, it's a glorious place, I love it. Beautiful weather, nice temperature. The water's a lovely 25 to 28 degrees. My son and I love the water and being here is just ideal. We went kayaking, went for a swim, snorkeled a bit. Didn't see too much, the visibility is not great. Jumping for few rocks and uh, that was really magnificent. A couple of nights here. I'd like to stay a little bit longer actually, but we've got other things to do, so uh, we'll be moving off tomorrow morning. With everyone settling in for the evening, Danny and I made our way back to camp but there were still a few mechanical issues that needed to be sorted. What am I doing? I've um, got to adjust my handbrake, work out what's wrong with the water pump, and I've got to try and track down a problem I've got with the electronic stability control. And I just like lying under my car and resting. Here we are, in the middle of the mountains, tucked away in this valley. We have swags, we have tents, we've got so many different contraptions. We had one person sleeping under a tarp, and I said, if I'm coming on this trip again and we're going to stay for a few days, I'm bringing this. This is the crib, come in and have a look. Obviously, in bed you don't want to be on camera, but part of this is to show you the hacienda, the crib. I've set it up, queen size bed, beautiful mattress, really comfy. I got the Narva flexi lights. I've got the his and her fans either side. We've got the power points for charging all the phones. In love. Underneath, we've got a trailer that carries this thing around the place. It's on 35 inch Mickey Thompson tires. It's got Narva's battery systems underneath, charging systems, fuse boxes. It's got the whole kit and kabungle that I need for when I'm going off road. This morning got going at a reasonable time again. We actually got a crew, some local crew. We got Simon, Aaron and Tamara. They've come down in two vehicles and they're just showing us around the local tracks. Sent Simon a message on Facebook. We're trying to get a bit of four-wheel drive access on a local beach. Simon said, yeah, well, we're actually down at Yale, so come down and have a trip and we'll have a chat and whatever else. So yeah, that's how we got on board. One of the main beaches we're looking at is about probably half hour from here, up north, Seven Mile Beach. Instead of driving three hours to Stockton Beach, We've got awesome beaches down here. We're trying to work with rangers and council and all that. We've just got a Facebook page, South Coast Fall Drive Access Group. We've got about 1,500 people on board so far. Our new mates will be along for the ride as we descend into the depths of Mintbush Track before clambering up the infamous Monkey Gum Fire Trail. We'll be spreading all of the action over the next few episodes because we don't want you to miss a single wheel lift or crushed in sidestep. We'll be testing our skills and our nerve against ridiculously steep climbs and seriously savage rocks. Lending help to those who need it. And it all culminates in one of New South Wales' most infamous challenges. 
Will everyone make it through these truly epic tracks? You'll have to watch to find out. Until then, I'm Simon Christie, and Danny and I both hope you'll join us for next week's episode of Your 4x4.